former President Trump's $454 million deadline is less than 24 hours away. New York Attorney General Letitia James is threatening to seize Trump real estate assets if he doesn't pay up, all in her mission she campaigned on to be New York's top cop. Listen. I look forward to going into the office of Attorney General every day, suing him, defending your rights, and then going home. Fox News correspondent C.B. Cotton is live outside Trump Tower, one of the properties the AG is threatening to take over. C.B. Hi, Joe. This morning on True Social, former President Donald Trump going after those who brought the civil fraud charges against him, New York Attorney General Letitia James and Judge Arthur N. Gorin, the former president writing on the platform, quote, the judge in the AG case fraudulently undervalued Mar-a-Lago at $18 million in order to create his fake narrative. He is grossly incompetent and corrupt. I should have zero fine, end quote. AG James took Trump to trial last fall and alleged Trump his company and adult sons were part of a decade-long scheme overvaluing properties to defraud banks and insurers. The judge ruled in, AG's, in the AG's favor and handed over the massive penalty plus interest. Trump must now secure the $454 million bond for his appeal by tomorrow, or the state can try to target his assets. Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had this to say on CNN. It is my belief that all people should be treated equally under the law. I actually think that, that there is risk in not seizing these assets and, um, and the open window that exists in him trying to secure these funds through other means. Uh, we've seen a lot of interesting transactions happening with Truth Social and other means, and uh, there's a very real risk of political corruption. That is not about being a Republican. It is not about being a Democrat. It's about being an unethical and individual who is subject and prone to criminality. And unfortunately, um, I, this is the state that we're in. On Sunday morning, Futures with Maria Bartiromo in an exclusive interview, the former president's son, Eric, said he's been scrambling to try to help his father. Listen to this. No Eric. one's ever seen a bond this size, every single person when I came to them saying, hey, can I get a half billion dollar bond? Maria, they were laughing. They were laughing. Yeah. Top executives of the largest surety companies had never seen anything of this size. And what, they're going to start seizing assets if he can't put up something that's not available so, in the United I mean States? Now, Eric Trump went on to maintain his father's innocence in that interview. The former president has asked the state appellate division to waive the bond in the civil fraud judgment or allow him to not post one at all. Eric Trump told Maria Bartiromo they're still waiting on that decision and they're hopeful. Now, in a separate legal battle, the former president's uh, attorneys have asked uh, the court they want to delay Trump's hush money case. A judge could make a decision on that request in a hearing scheduled for tomorrow. So, Joe, a lot to watch here. Back to you. Thanks, E.B. So let's hear from Mitch Landry. He is the co-chair of the Biden campaign. And here's what he has to say uh, about this whole case. Roll it. The jury that matters the most is the American people on Election Day. And Joe Biden is going to take it to Donald Trump and whoop him where it matters. People can take note that Donald Trump is out on bail right now, and he's trying to find bond. And while we're talking about how he's going to do that, people should not forget the reason why he's out on bail is because he has 88 federal criminal indictments pending against him. All right, Jason Chaffetz, does this strategy work as far as painting Donald Trump as a criminal, therefore he should not be president of the United States in 2024? Democrats can keep doing this to their own political peril. There, there is no victim here. The banks got paid in full. The bank's not complaining about it. There is no body there that's out there. So what did Donald Trump do other than be Donald Trump? You have an attorney general who pledged every day she was going to go after a person not a crime, after a person. That is not justice in the United States of America. The more they do that to Donald Trump, the more they realize, you know what? Democrats have stepped far too far. They, they've gone way too overboard in this. Donald Trump is a political victim in, a poli in, a, in an election year, and I believe it's election interference. 
There's no victim here. Dagan? Um, I think that maybe, so Charlie Gasparini is reporting that um, he's hearing that President Trump will come up with the money. Mm -hmm. um, if anything happens with the appellate court, they'll pro maybe reduce the amount of the bond to $100 million. That would be my guess. Andy McCarthy is thinking that because of what happened with the case. But part of me thinks that Maybe the Trump campaign and the family want Tish James to make a move on these I'm with assets. You on that that it to because one, it will drive down the value of the assets. She will look like, to quote Steve Quatzo in the New York Post, she will look like Xi Jinping going after uh, just seizing property at will because she feels like it. It will further drive businesses out of New York City and state, but it will drive a stake through the hearts of all those vampires who are Democrats who are running for office in November. Yeah. It is a complete abuse of power. Not only, she, they used a statute that you don't even have to prove criminal intent. There were no, there were no losses, there were uh, no victims, and no intent. It's not common law fraud. It was just, uh, again, it was a kangaroo court at its worst. Kat, are you with Dagan and, and me to a certain extent where do you think that Tish James will actually go ahead and seize Trump assets? Let's say he says, I double dare you to take my property, to take my money, to take everything I've built, because politically that probably helps him on some level. I think it would definitely would help him politically. I also think that, you know, it is just interesting, this whole thing. It's, it's this, that there's been this refrain repeated that, you know, he's not above the law and that's why this is happening. He's not above the law. But the facts are that this is unprecedented, which means that everyone else has been above whatever this is, always, except for him. And so only one of two things can be true, which is that this is a political thing, and it is only ever going to be him that's going to go through this, or this is going to be used against other people, which should make people afraid, and probably would make people afraid, who are probably already hesitant to maybe want to open a business in New York because of how expensive it is, and just it's just really unforgiving climate for, for businesses in New York. So I think that, you know, I think it, it, it could potentially help him. I think that it could potentially hurt her. And then also just as New Yorkers, I think a lot of us think, you know, there's a lot of empty storefronts. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear from Brett Tolman. Is. <laughs> he is the former federal prosecutor. Uh, he says the Trump case is a miscarriage of justice. Give a listen. Anytime someone with power, a prosecutor, a DA, uh, anyone with power that can enforce the laws of this country, when they stop caring about the actual case at hand and they care more about making it difficult for an individual that they don't like, then we've lost the interest of fairness in the administration of justice. Uh, look, Brett Tolman is one of the more talented former U.S. attorneys. He knows what he's talking about. Justice in America is important. It's not a partisan thing if it's equally administered. But you have an entire class of people who believe that there's an imbalance right now, that they're going after him because he's Donald Trump. And that's the only reason. And to value mar -Lago at $18 million? Are you kidding me? That is such a joke. The so parking lot. At Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 and, and earlier we heard from AOC, the legal expert, about yeah. what's legal and illegal. I mean, come on, folks. The, the average person understands. And you, when you can't explain to the American public what it is Donald Trump did that was wrong, you don't have a case. Exactly. D Dag and I got to get your reaction to this. This is Fonnie Willis, of course. Uh, not ashamed that, you know, she did have a relationship with a man, unquote. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Well, I don't feel like my reputation needs to be reclaimed. Let's say it for the record. I'm not embarrassed by anything I've done. Um, you know, I guess my greatest crime is I had a relationship with a man, but that's not something that I find embarrassing in any way. Um, and I know that I have not done anything that's illegal. All while that was going on, we were writing responsive briefs. We were still doing the case in the way that it needed to be done. Um, I don't feel like we've been slowed down at all. Um, I do think that there are efforts to slow down this train, but the train is coming. Now, that's her first interview, Dagan, on camera since this whole decision came down in Fulton County, Georgia, as far as her boyfriend not being able to prosecute this case. Right. A man is not a plan. Well, it was your plan until you got caught. And... Uh, she, you know, she can always move to New York and yeah. run for attorney general.
Tammy She's got the, she has the she has the resume. I'd watch a reality TV show that she started. Yeah, <laughs> I can admit that, right? Really? Is that yes. true? Oh, All right. Come on, you wouldn't. Totally transparent. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.